So I kind of wonder what this, uh, you know, fungus is growing on this tree. It's actually growing up this whole side of this. It's a dead branch. Looks like the woodpecker's got a hold of it for sure. Would be nice to know. So guys, today I'm going to do this video in honor of the Woodsman School. Um, kind of packed everything up. I'm going to do a video basically showing some of the stuff that I have purchased through the Woodsman School. And uh, this pack here is definitely going to be the highlight of the video. Um, I was asked about it uh, on my Survive Without Facebook page. And if you guys haven't checked that out, go ahead and go over there and check that out on Facebook. Just look up Survive Without. Uh, got me a new toy as you can see right there well not really a toy obviously but uh, my boss gave me uh, this M6 Scout for working there for six years uh, as a thank you so got that and one of the questions I was asked about this pack was if it had a spot for an axe and this is what I do I carry an axe, which you won't see me doing that, because I I just don't really find a need for it here in the state of Kansas where I live. Um, really just, you know, I had that little accident when I nicked my knee with an axe, with this axe right here actually, and decided that I really didn't have a need for it, because I had never used one before anyway, um, and except for when I bought this axe last year. Uh, I've had some other ones but always ends up being an accident around one. Uh, not even saying myself because one of my good friends was using one. and Just takes a little you know bump skip or you know minor slip and these were definitely minor ones and I could only imagine if somebody was you know just full swinging and to hit themselves would be uh, catastrophic and I decided that you know, as far as some of the places that I hike into, if I were to have even a minor accident like I did with my knee, that would have uh, extremely hindered me getting out. And, there, you know, you hit anywhere in between your legs, you know, where the main arteries are, you have seconds to live. So, that's my rant on axes. <laughs> that's not what this is about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this stuff out of here to show you some of their stuff and to talk a little bit more about this pack. Hang tight. Okay, so uh, before I go ahead and take this pack off, I thought I'd go ahead and show a few of the things about the pack while I have it on. Um, the pack does have a sternum strap, as you can see right here, and this thing is adjustable for anybody large. Um, I do want to say I got this pack um, pretty early on when he first came out with it, and I do believe that he has made some uh, adjustments to the pack, and I honestly just don't know what they are at the moment. Because um, when they first came out, some people gave him a few suggestions, and I believe that he uh, accommodated those suggestions into the new pack design, per se. But, like I said, this sternum strap has plenty of adjustment. Um, I actually punched an extra hole in here to close it up more because uh, I just like these straps to be a little bit closer in right here. Um, it does have a waist belt. I'll go ahead and bring the camera down for that so you can see that. Um, it's not like a huge waist belt but some people like waist belts. It has padding here and then a nice you know big buckle here. Um, I like waist belts. Some people don't. You can remove this waist belt very very easily from this pack if you don't like it. Uh, as you can see there, it just slides in the little pocket back here. You can just pull it right out. Um, let's see, I'll move the camera up again here, show some other features of it that I like about it. I love these cinch straps on the side. As you can see, I've cinched the gun in there. Um, it helps compress the pack to pull it closer to your, your back, which helps a lot to uh, distribute the weight more you know over the torso per se if there's that's even possible um, got it on this side I usually tuck these strings in but for now I didn't do that um, 
there's a lot of adjustment left in the uh, straps for the shoulder straps. I think I may have this one on the last loop and there's you know, four more holes left. So that'll show you that. Uh, what else can I talk about while I'm standing up with it? Oh, I've packed this pack down a lot. I have, uh, <laughs> I know some people make fun of me for my channel name being Survive Without because I carry a lot of gear, kind of. Uh, well, there really ain't much kind of about that. <coughs> um, in an earlier video, you'll see me um, describing why my channel's name Survive Without, and it kind of more or less has to do with learning to survive without. So, and when I come out, usually I like to test a lot of different stuff out. Um, and that, hence why I have a lot of stuff with me. Um, food and water weigh quite a bit. And of course, if you don't take any of that with you, um, then you can collect it off the land and that really saves a lot of weight. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this gun off and uh, I'll show you something else about this pack that I like for when I'm basically training for a hike. I've took this pack on uh, many hikes um, it's been my main pack for over a year now, um, and I love it. Uh, granted, it is not, you know, I wouldn't say it's as comfortable as, you know, lightweight backpackers type backpack would be with the um, load lifters on it, because this obviously doesn't have load lifters on it, you know, like the ILBE. Uh, that thing is really comfortable, definitely meant for taking it to heavy weights on long hikes. When I pack this pack, usually I try to pack all the heavy stuff towards the top, which seems to help quite a bit. Usually towards the top and closer to my back is where I pack that stuff. And that helps keep the weight from feeling like it's pulling you backwards. Um, at least for me, that seems to work. Um, so hang tight. All right, guys. Here is the other reason why I love this pack. Um, works out perfect for this. Um, usually. I'll put one or both of my kids up here and it works great to carry them. They sit on there perfectly. She's got a hold of the handle, I believe, right? In their little loop handle up there like backpacks have. Um, see if you can see this better if I walk away. Plenty of room up there. I mean, she usually sits in the back, I think, and my son actually sits up there closer, which I love. <laughs> It just adds a little extra weight up there, so kind of, you know, makes it eat. You know, if you add your kids to your pack, like I do, it makes the uh, longer hikes seem way easier because you're obviously deleting late weight um, when you go on the hike. <laughs> so I practice heavy and go a little bit lighter. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and see what I got in it. Um, Go ahead and show you this. This is where I put the axe, and the way I take the axe out, or did for say, is it's got this nice pocket here that's definitely bigger than the head of this axe. This is the Weatherlings. I don't know what it's actually called. It's like a 20 inch axe, but I just pull it out of the bottom of those straps, and when I want to put it back in, I just feed it up. It's easier when it's on the ground. But I just feed it back up through these loops up through that little handle there sorry the handle up there and uh, then drop it back down in this pocket so let's go ahead and take that out so we can talk about the rest of it here all right I'm gonna try to make this quick because I know my videos seem, seem to get long and people do not usually normally like to watch long videos. But with this pack, I got this long pocket here, this big pocket, and two smaller pockets. This smaller pocket on the bottom here, I usually, sometimes, I, I switch it up all the time, let's just say that. But right now, I've just got paracord in there. This upper pocket, I'll go ahead and pull that out and show you because I have something from the woods from school in there. This is just my headlamp. And I've got a Woodsman School flint and steel kit. I got an Altoids 10 in there. 
and let's go ahead and show what I have in this kit here. I love these things. So, something new that's on their site that I recently got was this striker. And if you guys would like to see that in action, just, you know, say so. Um, seems to be working out pretty good. Let's set that over here. Um, this is one of the fire kits that he has. I think this may be called the Mountain Man kit. Could be wrong. I really should have done some research and uh, wrote that stuff down because I'm really bad with remembering things like that. But here's the striker for it that goes inside the tent. It fits perfectly on the top of that. Um, I've added things to this kit. So not everything you see here was in this kit. I may have added that rock. Um, I've got jute twine in here. Just a small piece of it. And I've got some uh, Mulan. I can't even say the name of this rope right here in here. To add to the bird's nest. Then inside of that, I've got some more rocks because I like to play with them. And I've got a lot of char cloth in here, um, wire to do wire snares. And I've got, um, let's get down a little deeper here. I've got, uh, let me go ahead and pull this char cloth out. Set it aside, I'll get right back with you. Sorry, Sorry about that. I've got uh, two hanks of bank line in here. As you can see, there's one there, and there's another one right over to the side of it. Um, aside from that, I also have a big deal of brass wire. Um, also, think uh, it looks like I threw in some waxed jute in there. It's kind of an extra backup to throw in there. So it's it's a pretty nice kit, and I, I mean, I've never stuck this tin in the fire, but I have no doubt that's going to work great for doing uh, char cloth. I have thought about going ahead and taking, instead of poking a hole directly in the top of this, a lot of the tins, um, this is definitely not my idea that I've seen it somewhere else, but they drill a hole directly through the side of it right here in the lip of the lid. You could probably do it in, you know, maybe even two places, I don't know. But uh, you drill the hole in the lid and then take in turn it once you pull it off the fire so the holes don't line up that snuffs out the oxygen but uh, there's the there's the fire kit for you guys so I figured if I didn't do this somebody would be asking about it but I figured I better go ahead and show these strikers have you noticed I've done a video on this before I don't hold any of these round strikers like you see here because one slight scrape across some knuckles and you'll quit doing that. I carry it right here and it's very sturdy. You know, just one thumb on the top there and the other two fingers on the side and then I strike it. But it actually throws pretty good sparks. Um, I bought this other striker separate. I liked it, just the way it looked and it's got this little knob for your finger to sit on and the little house peak to uh, grab a hold of here and I like it too it shows it showers the sparks pretty good I mean hope that all came in camp in view of the camera I don't even know if you can see the sparks but there's a good healthy amount there all right so next question is what do I have in this pocket here and like I said before everything seems to change uh, one thing I did do with this is I punched an extra hole in every one of these to cinch the lid down a little bit so that would you know cover the lip a little bit better for me um, maybe that's just me uh, I did think and, and I'm sure they've changed this by now I have no clue that this uh, this buckle should have been lowered down just a little bit more than where it is right now uh, but these buckles are awesome. They're amazing. They, I don't know exactly the name for them, but I think they're called cam buckles because they have uh, this roller right here. And you can, you can, you know, feed this stuff in there one-handed when you're not on video camera. And 
strap it up one handed. Pretty, pretty easy. So if something was wrong with your hand, you know, or you don't want to get the other one out of the glove, and you can undo them one handed too. So, anyway, uh, what I have in here right now at this moment, usually in this pack I carried my extra knife, and that would have been for, say, a more. <coughs> but I don't have one on my side today. <coughs> I went ahead and threw in the Woodsman School Knife, which I absolutely, well, I guess it's not called the Woodsman School Knife. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I apologize for that. I really didn't mean to misinterpret what it is called but I absolutely love this diving sparrow I know that Joe is working on another uh, knife for the school that is actually called the woodsman school knife I believe but I think this one's called the trapper I love this knife I just uh, I cannot say enough about it I've definitely put it through a lot of use and you can probably see that with some of the color variations in it. Uh, this one here was done by Diving Sparrow. I got this from the school, or from the Woodsman School. Love this knife. Um, it come in a leather sheath. The only thing I added to it was a Wolf Customs dangler because I absolutely love it dangling. I, I don't know why, I just uh, don't like that. I don't know. It's just something there to kind of jab you in the side, and I just like it to dangle, so that's just me. Um, this ferro rod actually come from the Woodsman School also. This was a gift from Derek. Kind of chewed it up a little bit. This is the oak. Uh, light my fire, I believe, something like that. Absolutely love this thing. I very rarely use it because I've been doing a lot more flint and steel and, you know, just primitive fire, you know, uh, bow and drill, things like that. But it's nice to know it's there. I did do a video where I re-wet form this because uh, over the amount of use that I put it in or through, it has got wet, dried out, and blah blah blah, and loosened up. And I re-wet form this, and it turned out pretty pretty good. Definitely, at least for my first one. Love, love, love this knife. It is the most comfortable knife I have ever held. I mean, it fits my hand. It's nice and round. It's got a spot for my my uh, index finger. It just it just is meant as a bushcraft knife, for say. Okay, enough about the knife. Sorry. <laughs> Could go on about that thing probably. Okay, what else do I got in here? Well, at the moment I've got tent stakes and this is my new favorite tent stake so far I've got ten, 10 of these in here they take up hardly zero room I mean as you can see they're not like those ABS plastic stakes uh, these will go through a lot I mean I, I haven't got a lot of good luck with this thing so far uh, not that I've used this particular type of stake a lot of course this video is not about that got one of those fish spreaders for this cup in here. This front pocket holds a lot for me. I did not bring it out this time, but I got my long spoon that you hear me rant and rave about all the time that usually goes in here. I've got two sticks of fat wood in here. I've got my canteen lid wrapped in a bandana, and of course I've got my stove stand and uh, my cup. This usually goes in the bottom of this. I usually keep it wrapped up. I don't like listening to a lot of clanking. And then I got my Pathfinder slash canteen shop. Canteen cup stove combo. And that goes in there. Atwood. I mean, I've stuffed this pocket and it can hold more. I mean, you, 
hopefully I can stick something else on top up here. This uh, axe head. Then you head dappled in. Careful, it'll make your hand sticky. Okay. Well, it, it may not now because it's so cold. But usually they're full set. Here's the thing I am not 100% sure on, but I think they have redesigned this part of it somewhat. Okay, so I've got the lid right here, and I've got it cinched down all the way, guys. That's on, uh, I actually believe I made that hole, to be honest with you, um, as an extra hole. Cinch it down, and I've got five extra holes here that I could use if need be. This has the nice big cam buckles, or whatever you call them in there also. So this is the part I think that they changed and I don't know. Um, if not, <laughs> this would be an excellent idea if you guys, if you know, the Woodsman School has not changed this. Is to sew on an extra flap here that would fold down this way. So if I add an extra gear I can unfold that flap and flap it over the top here as like a rain shield. Uh, I think they did that but I, like I said, I don't 100% know that. But it is a nice flap. Another thing I do like about this pack is these two handles on the side make it nice for picking up and putting in your vehicle, or whatever you want to do. Um, these side uh, cinch deals here, um, very nice. They got these little rings on the side. They're, they're brass or whatnot, looks like. And I love those things because I use these Night Ice S hooks and I use these things to clip all kinds of things on the side of this thing. I'll tell you what, I've packed. I mean, you'll see this thing. I put on my usually my my extra camera dry case, which is a pretty big thing. I usually clip it on the side of this. And usually put something else on the other side. Uh, I put in my hydration bladder in here in between all these and put it down in that pocket there. A full one. It's a three liter. It's not a small hydration bladder. Put it on there. Put the hose, you know, to my my chest straps, uh, and it works great. And as I'm hiking, and I'll go to take a rest, I'll just cinch it down a little bit more because I've been drinking uh, a little bit of it. So uh, I'll go ahead and pull some stuff out of here. This here, right now, I just got. Um, well, actually, I've got a pot in here. This is doesn't come with a pack, obviously. This is something Malkin has. Malcolm over at the Hidson Woodsman has made for me. I've got a pot in here right now, and I've got ammunition in this pouch for right now. Um, they they sell the spot on the um, the school site, I believe, except for it might be the smaller one, which I've never used. I've, I only bought the big one. Um, I love the big one. I'm sure I'd like the small one just as much. I definitely am glad I bought this. I mean, I fit, uh, I actually don't know what's in here right now, but I think it's, yeah. This is a Crown Royal bag. I don't drink, but I got it off of somebody and I use it to put in, you know, food goods like a hot chocolate and whatnot. Put this off to the side. I got my dry tender bag in here. Got my first aid in here. Uh, this is from the school. This is their tarp, the canvas tarp. And this thing is a lunker, guys. It weighs a decent amount. Um, let you know you've got a substantial tarp. And what I love about this tarp is tie outs. And these things are like every two feet on this whole tarp. Um, I don't remember the exact size of the tarp. I want to say it's an 8x8. But you'll have to go to a site and figure that out yourself, probably because I just don't know at the moment. We'll set that up here in just a second, guys. Um, the new packs, I believe, have a zipper back here for this pad to fit in. Uh, mine didn't have that. It was stitched closed. And what I did is I just popped that one set of stitching because I, I wanted to be able to get to this foam pad. I use this foam pad 
in my hammock or whatnot as maybe even a sitting pad, a kneeling pad. Um, I pack things back in that pocket also, like you see this orange is one of those nice roll-up cutting boards. It fits back there nicely. I've also, um, I don't have it in here at the moment, but like a buck saw, um, saw blade with the in its sheath or that it comes with, I've put that back there. Um, anything that's flat, I've stuffed back there. Um, I got a uh, reflective tarp in here. I've got my normal pillowcase, my camouflage pillowcase that has all my different layers of clothes, like wools, um, whatnot. Poly pros are in there. And then just in the bottom of this, I've got my Hudson Bay wool blanket. So let's go ahead and let you take a peek inside the bag here. Nothing really to look at, but kind of shows you how this pad is done in here. Like I said, I think they put a zipper on this one now. And uh, the pad definitely helps out, give you a cushion. Um, I used to roll up one of those uh, foam pads in here, but I've recently changed from a foam pad to um, a thermo rest, so. That's not in here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set that tarp up so you can kind of see it. Uh, pretty much the pack guys well, guys that took about um, I don't know a minute and a half two minutes to do you know I got the toggle up there holding it around the branch same thing over there I got a toggle stuck with my stake there and stake there so I've got me a lean to I'm gonna go ahead and take you around to the other side so you can see what that looks like before it gets too All dark right, guys you can see uh, on the bottom of it there that I don't uh, have that closed down very good of course I'm in the creek bed like I said but I could stake out these other stakes, which there's three more loops on there to do that up and then cover it with leaves to block out anything else that's gonna be in there. Um, I'll go ahead and show you me in it. Um, just a quick shelter kind of deal here so you guys can get an idea of what it would be like. Fairly nice setup up in here so I love this tarp uh, I haven't used it a ton um, it definitely uh, holds the heat in here better because that wind is not transferring through this tarp guys uh, it will sag pretty easy so you know tying something in here to pull up this this back part would be something you'd probably want to do uh, would help it out but I believe, I mean, I've purchased some other things, but that's pretty much the stuff that I've got from the Woodsman School, and I've been very happy with everything I've done. I've purchased two other knives from that school. I think it is called the Mora Bushcraft, two of those. Um, gave both of them to my dad that I did the hike with on. But uh, wish I was closer. I'd love to take some classes from them. Uh, Good guy. I've got some video. I got a video, I believe, I got from him on uh, do, using compass work, basically. Can't remember the name of it right now. I just caught in my pants and I couldn't get out. We'll get that fixed, okay? Put, it, put it down right there, okay? But uh, anyway, uh, don't know if you'd ever watch this, but I just want to say thank you, Derek. You've uh, You're a pretty nice guy. And I think it's really cool the direction you've gone with everything. You know, getting that new place and all. Daddy, I was like standing like this. But I was trying to pull away from it, but I couldn't get out. So you I couldn't get out? I, I, was, I was like trying to get it off my pants, but it was like stuck. You figured it out though, didn't you? Yeah, because I was pulling it. Good job. Alright guys. Take care.